Hello and welcome to the explanation and demo video of the Sentiment Analysis Project. This is an educational project using the IMDb Movie Review dataset to derive a sentiment predictor from both traditional machine learning and deep learning algorithms. The objective is to showcase the characteristics of machine learning and deep learning algorithms and their pros and cons. Let's start with the theory. The first concept is sentiment analysis. It is the process of identifying different sentiments in text. At the simplest level, the number of sentiments is 2, or binary, indicating positive or negative sentiment. Sentiment analysis is often used by businesses to check consumer sentiment in social data. The second concept is artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is divided into two categories of traditional machine learning and the more recent buzzword, deep learning. The third concept is machine learning. It refers to techniques applied on datasets in which we have domain knowledge into the relevant features and their underlying relationship with the target variable. The simplest example is linear regression, or the best fit line through the data points. The assumption is that there is a linear relationship between the features and target variable. The task of the algorithm is to determine the precise coefficients and intercept of this linear relationship. Different machine learning algorithms are optimized to different underlying relationships and how they locate the best fit. The fourth concept is deep learning. It has lots of adjustable parameters to model any phenomena, however complex. Deep learning uses big data to slowly tune these model parameters to optimize its prediction of the target variable. The upside of deep learning is its ability to model any phenomena without assumptions of the relevant features and underlying relationship. The downside is the need for enormous amount of data and computing power. The fifth concept is natural language processing. The perplexing question is how do machines understand human language and sentiments? In simple terms, what happens is that text is first converted into numbers which computers can handle. It then finds patterns in those numbers associated with different sentiments. Hence, when it comes across a new text, it looks for those same patterns to detect the corresponding sentiment. Let's return to our IMDb Movie Review dataset. IMDb is a website where users post their reviews and ratings for movies. The rating is on a scale from 1 to 10. Let's look at an example, The Matrix Resurrections. The average rating based on 140,000 users is 5.7. Each user rating comes with a review. Here's a user review and its corresponding rating of 5. Let's look at the IMDb dataset. The dataset has 50,000 movie reviews and their corresponding sentiments, either positive or negative. This sentiment is based on the user rating. For a user rating from 1 to 5, a negative sentiment is assigned. Conversely, for rating from 6 to 10, a positive sentiment is assigned. The 50,000 IMDb dataset is balanced with an equal number of positive and negative sentiments. Let's start with data pre-processing. It refers to cleaning up the data and getting it ready for the subsequent machine learning or deep learning algorithms. The IMDb Movie Review dataset is relatively clean as it is balanced and labeled. We can go directly into the pre-processing for sentiment analysis. The objective is to convert the text into meaningful numbers. The first step is tokenization, which breaks down the text into component words. Each component word is called a token. The second step is removal of stop words. Stop words refer to words which occur frequently, which don't add much meaning to the task at hand. For instance, in our movie review sentiment model, the word, I, occurs across the different texts, as each review is written by a user. Other stop words are pronouns, the words, movie, review and so on. The third step is TF-IDF vectorization. TF stands for term frequency, and IDF for inverse document frequency. TF-IDF vectorization basically finds unique words associated with a certain sentiment. For instance, the word good is associated with a positive review sentiment. The more the word good is used in a particular review, its term frequency goes up. At the same time, the word good occurs only in positive reviews and hence its inverse document frequency is also high. TF-IDF is the multiplication of the term frequency and its inverse document frequency. Hence, the appearance of the word, good, in a review is a good predictor of positive sentiment. Starting from each movie review, we compute the TF-IDF number for each word in the text. Each movie review text is therefore converted into a string of numbers, or a vector point in high dimensional space. Together, all these vector points and their corresponding sentiments can be represented as a matrix of numbers, suitable for downstream machine learning. 
let's look at the Python code for data pre-processing. Python has useful libraries for natural language processing. We use the Natural Language Toolkit or NLTK library for pre-processing, and the sklearn library for TFIDF vectorization, and for running the machine learning algorithms. We start with importing the relevant Natural Language Toolkit and sklearn modules. We then load the IMDB Movie Review dataset and display a sample of data records of movie reviews and their corresponding sentiments. We also verify that the dataset is balanced with 25,000 each of positive and negative reviews. Let's look at data pre-processing. The first step is converting all movie review text to lower case. The second step is to remove stop words. The NLTK library has a list of usual stop words for this use. The next step is to look at the frequently occurring words across the reviews and to remove them if not meaningful. These are the stop words specific to our use case. For instance, such words like movie, film, scene, one, and two are removed. This process is repeated three times to simplify the dataset. We then split the dataset into 80% training data and 20% testing data. Finally, we apply TFIDF vectorization from the sklearn library. The next step comes the three machine learning algorithms. Let's start with the first algorithm, logistics regression. Logistics regression is a binary classifier for either a true or false outcome. In our case, it means either positive or negative sentiment. Conceptually, we can represent all the movie reviews as TFIDF vector points in hyperspace. Logistics regression finds a hyperplane separating out the positive and negative reviews. The optimal hyperplane gives the greatest number of correct predictions of positive or negative sentiments in the training data. Let's look at the Python code. The first step is to import the logistics regression module from sklearn library. We train the model by fitting the classifier to the training data. Using the test data, we then test the predictions of the trained model. Finally, the model is evaluated using the confusion matrix. The confusion matrix gives a more complete picture beyond accuracy. It gives the precision, recall and F1 score. The F1 score combines both precision and recall in a single measure. In this case, this logistics regression model scores around 90% for all these measures. Let's look at the second machine language algorithm, Support Vector Machine or SVM. Like logistics regression, SVM finds the optimal hyperplane separating the positive and negative reviews. It locates the optimal hyperplane that maximizes the hyperspace distance between the closest positive and negative reviews. Subsequently, for a new review, the predictor decides based on which side of the hyperplane the vector point falls on. Let's look at the Python code. The steps are like those of logistics regression. The support vector classifier module is imported from the sklearn library. The classifier is trained by fitting the training data. We then test the model and evaluate its performance using the confusion matrix. Like the logistics regression model, the SVM classifier also scores around 90% for all the measures of accuracy, precision, recall and F1 score. Let's look at the third machine language algorithm, Naive Bayes. Naive Bayes is based on the Bayes theorem of conditional probability. In our case, we try to find the conditional probability of positive sentiment, given a particular review, and the conditional probability of negative sentiment based on the same review. The greater one of the two, is the predicted sentiment. Bayes' theorem allows the conditional probability of a new review, to be broken down to the probabilities of its constituent words, which can be obtained from the training data based on the occurrence frequency. Let's look at the Python code. Although the concepts behind logistics regression, SVM and Naive Bayes are different, the Python code is similar. The relevant classifier algorithm is first imported from the sklearn library. The model is trained by fitting it with the training data. Finally, the model is evaluated using test data on the trained model through the confusion matrix. In this case, the Naive Bayes algorithm classifier scores around 87% for all the measures. Let's look at the results of the three machine learning algorithms together. All three of them are quick to train, and produced accurate results at around 90%. Let's look at deep learning. We start with the concept of word vectors. Word vector is the deep learning equivalent of converting words into numerical representations for computer processing. 
It applies a deep learning algorithm to training sentences, such that each word is represented as a vector in high-dimensional space. One algorithm uses the conditional bag of words or SIBO concept to optimize the probability of predicting a particular word, given the context words around it. The resultant word vectors are such that similar words and meaning congregate near each other. In addition, the hyperspace distances separating the vectors are meaningful. If we take the vector king, minus vector man, add on vector woman, we get vector queen. Let's zoom into deep learning. Deep learning uses artificial neurons arranged in different layouts, called the deep neural network. Each neuron takes input values, multiplies them with certain weights, adds on a bias, and passes them into an activation function to give an output value. The weights and biases are tunable parameters. They can run into billions or even trillions for complex real-life cases. Deep learning works through iterative processes of forward and backward propagations. In the forward propagation, the input, for instance the movie review word vector, passes through the deep learning architecture and arrives at the output neuron predicting a certain probability for positive sentiment. The difference between the prediction and the actual truth is then compared based on a cost function. In the backward propagation, the optimizer adjusts the weights and biases slightly based on this difference. This process is then repeated many times to tune all the model parameters. This is a crude analogy of how forward and backward propagations work. For instance, an algorithm needs to predict a number between 1 to 100, say 85. The algorithm starts with a guess of 50, which represents the forward propagation. The difference between the actual 85 and prediction 50 means that the guess is too small. In the backward propagation, the weight and bias are adjusted slightly to make the guess bigger. The second forward propagation results in a slightly bigger guess of 55. This quantum of adjustment to the model parameters is called the learning rate. A higher learning rate helps converge to the desired answer quicker, but it can also overshoot. Over repeated iterations, the algorithm arrives at the correct prediction. Let's look at the Python code of our deep learning model. We are using the TensorFlow Keras library, and the first step is to import the necessary modules. The second step is to configure the various hyperparameters in the deep learning architecture. Epic refers to number of iterative sets of forward and backward propagations. Vector space embedding is to convert words into word vectors in n-dimensional hyperspace. TensorFlow Keras has the embedding layer feature that automatically converts words into word vectors. The CNN or convolutional neural network and dense layer architectures are the components in our architecture. The CNN architecture consists of layers of neurons stacked on top of one another. The dense layer refers to fully connected neurons where each neuron is connected to every other neuron before its layer. The next step is to load the IMDB movie review dataset. The data pre-processing standardizes each review to a length of 100 words. Those reviews with more than 100 words are truncated, while those with less are padded with zeros. The next step is to define the deep learning architecture. The first is an embedding layer to convert words into word vectors in n-dimensional space. The second is a set of convolutional layers using the ReLU activation function. The third is the fully connected dense layer with the same ReLU activation function. The last is a single output neuron with a sigmoid activation function. The sigmoid function gives an output of either 0 or 1, which suits our binary classifier being either true or false. In between these layers, are pulling layers to reduce data size, and dropout layers to reduce overfitting. Let's look at the model summary. Even our simple architecture has about half a million parameters. Each of these parameters need to be tuned. It is not surprising that deep learning models need lots of data and computing power for tuning. The next step is to configure the loss function to cross entropy, the optimizer to NATAM, and set early stopping so that the model stops training once the accuracy levels off. Once all the hyperparameters are configured, the next step is to train the model. Each epoch takes about half a minute, depending on computer hardware. The training stops at epoch 6 as accuracy levels off at 85%. We can visualize the loss function and accuracy across the consecutive epochs. After training, the next step is to evaluate the model performance. We use the remaining 20% of the data set aside for testing and evaluate the confusion matrix. In this case, the accuracy, precision, recall and F1 score are about 86%. Comparing the results of the three machine learning algorithms and that of deep learning, we see that the scores for machine learning at 90% are slightly higher than that for deep learning at 86%.
Although the deep learning model took longer to train, it did not fare better. The possible reasons are that on the machine learning side, the underlying phenomenon is sufficiently simple to model. At the same time, on the deep learning side, the 50,000 dataset is too small. A larger dataset can support more complex architecture, which could improve the results. All the Python code and slides are available at my GitHub folder. Have fun! I hope this video has given a better understanding of machine learning and deep learning, how they work, and how they differ from each other. Thanks for watching.